People with sickle cell disease often face unique challenges and have long suffered silently through a vasoclusive crisis. This can be very painful and is a frequent reason for emergency department visits and hospitalizations. For nearly two decades, hydroxyurea was the only FDA-approved therapy for sickle cell disease. In today's discussion, our panel of experts will discuss emerging therapies that have been developed to target specific pathophysiological mechanisms of sickle cell disease, either as preventative therapy or abortive approaches to vasoclusive crisis. I'm Dr. Athea Sunku. I'm a professor of medicine at Atrium Health in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm also the director of the Sickle Cell Disease Enterprise at the Levine Cancer Institute and at Atrium Health. Today, I am joined by four amazing experts. First, I have Dr. Berea Demeriam, who's an associate professor of medicine and the director of the New England Sickle Cell Institute at the University of Connecticut Health Center in Farmington, Connecticut. Berea, welcome to the panel. And I have Matt Heaney, the associate director of hematology program in the Division of Hematology and Oncology, the director of the Sickle Cell Program, and an associate professor at Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. Welcome, Matt. Good to see you. Next on my left is Julie Cantor, Dr. Julie Cantor, a lifespan hematologist, director of the Adult Sickle Cell Program and associate professor at the University of Alabama School of Medicine in Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome, Jules. Thanks. And last but not the least, I have Dr. Namish Shah. He's an associate professor of medicine, pediatrics, and nursing in the Department of Medicine at, school, at Duke University School of Medicine in Durham, North Carolina. Welcome, Namish. Thank you for joining us, and let's begin this panel. We're going to begin our conversation. I'm going to ask each of the panelists some questions, and they're going to give us their perspective, and we'll have a back and forth dialogue. So starting with um, Dr. Heaney, what is the pathophysiology of sickle cell disease? And tell us about, about the genetics of the disease and how people can, can get sickle cell disease. Well, if you, the sickle cell disease is a classic autosomal recessive disorder, meaning that you have to inherit the trait from each uh, parent. And this is a disease of the red blood cell, and particularly hemoglobin, the main protein within the red blood cell. And uh, the mutation in the blood cell, when the hemoglobin deoxygenates, it exposes a hydrophobic amino acid on the protein, and those hydrophobic amino acids can non-covalently polymerize or join to each other. And as in, when enough of those hemoglobin molecules polymerize, they can change the shape of the red blood cell from its normal biconcave disc into a uh, pathognomonic sickled cell. And that sickled cell uh, is rheologically unfavorable. It's as stiff, it's not as pliable and can play a role in uh, complications such as vasoocclusion. It can contribute to the blockage of blood flow, particularly in capillary beds. And the other consequence is that change of cell shape over uh, the lifespan of the red cell is that it prematurely hemolyzes, it breaks down. And that's the other main finding in sickle cell disease is the is hemolytic anemia, the shortened red cell lifespan. And there are different types of sickle cell disease. Can you touch on the different genotypes and what that means in terms of clinical severity of the disease? So the classic sickle mutation uh, is, uh, again, a beta globin mutation. Um, and that results uh, when bound with alpha globin in a heterotetramer. It's uh, hemoglobin S. And the classic form is hemoglobin SS, where you inherit the S mutation from each parent. However, there are other combinations, compound heterozygous forms of sickle cell disease, where you inherit the S mutation from one parent and then either another beta globin mutation such as hemoglobin C to give SC disease or hemoglobin S plus a beta thalassemia allele, whether it be a blank that produces no beta globin or produces a small amount of beta hemoglobin uh, being a uh, beta plus thalassemia mutation. And there are a variety of other rarer compound heterozygous forms such as SO and SD um, that are also considered severe sickling disorders. 